Mike Reynolds, suffered serious traumatic injuries. He doesn't remember details, just snapshots. The ambulance he was riding in, an armored vehicle with solid steel framework and three inch thick glass was forced off the road at the time he was removing his helmet to remove his body armor. He sustained multiple injuries resulting in excruciating pain, blurred vision, and uncontrollable stammering. However, Master Sergeant Reynolds is an ordinary man. He's a firefighter, a paramedic, a husband, a father, and a wound warrior. Here to show his, share his story with us, please help me welcome Master Sergeant Mike Reynolds. to a bunch of soldiers. I always wanted to be a paramedic, especially when I was a young boy. I would play a game called Emergency with my twin sister. And I would go through the, the patient extrication and, 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 the, uh, and the patient assessments and all that stuff. And, but it just was not the same as it became as, as I got older. I would go through high school. I kind of had some choices there. You could do what uh, do what I was capable of. I could do what I wanted to do. I could do what I had to do. It's kind of one of those things that you study and read the book and get an A. Don't study, don't read the book, you get a B. Way I figured it, a C would transfer. <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> my senior year in high school, my best friend killed himself. That kind of threw me into a little bit of an alcoholic tailspin. I was the guy that was drunk in class, stayed in trouble. I would graduate begin a mentorship program at the local ambulance service. While I was there, I would fall in love with helping other people. Because I was not 21 years old, the only thing I could do is volunteer. Because of the insurance that covers the ambulances, you're not allowed to drive unless you're 21. Can't drive, can't work. I would go to Dalt College and get my associate degree. And at 20 years old, I'd have a falling out with the EMS director. I said, can you give me a job? He says, you're not 21. I said, okay. So because I was not able to drive their $88,000 ambulance, I went down to Walnut Square Mall. I joined the United States Army. And about eight months later, I found myself in Germany in charge of a $5.9 million Black Hawk. <laughs> so I guess I showed him. <laughs> <laughs> I would stay in Germany. Bosnia would come and go. There would be other deployments, other places. I would have a cultural experience that I could compare with none other. I learned to speak German, drink beer, <laughs> drink more beer, <laughs> dated German girls, dated more German girls. <laughs> Time would come to come home after three years, I returned to America, go to Fort Bragg. I was the guy that they loved. They would walk in the door and said, we need somebody to go somewhere and do something. I said, hey, I'll go. 
said, you know where you're going? I said, like, I don't care. <laughs> said, you know what you're going to do? I was like, I don't care. Just get me out of here. <laughs> after, after flying medevac at Fort Bragg, I decided it was time to get out of the military. I left the Army, came back home to, Cal to Chatsworth. Now that I was over 21, I could finally get a job on the ambulance. Went to work at EMS, loved it, but I missed the military. One way to know that you've got a soldier's undivided attention is when you got him by the throat. Apparently that doesn't hold true for nurses in the ER. <laughs> I assured the EMS director I had his full undivided attention. <laughs> I would enlist in the Georgia Army National Guard and uh, begin to work with them to stand up their medevac unit. I would later progress to the fourth weapons of mass destruction team out of Atlanta. 22 guys that specialized in WMDs and domestic terrorism. I was their flight medic. After that, I continued to look for more. We, I had married my wife by that time, and we had a little girl. I would change positions to go to a, a medical unit to be their readiness NCO, the full-time guy, that, you know, the nine-to-five guy. And uh, while there, orders would come down for a rack. I'd volunteer to go to Iraq. It wasn't until I was introduced to Senator Isaacson that I, my wife actually found out I had volunteered to go. I guess she really didn't care that he was a senator that constituted a sidebar. <laughs> we would go to Iraq. We were about 90 of us in our unit. I was to take 33 soldiers and run ambulance operations there in Northern Iraq. It was a very difficult job. In 20 years of EMS experience, I average work in a pediatric cardiac arrest about once every 12 to 18 months. If you add all those together that I had worked before I got to Iraq, multiply it by two, I still beat it in the first month. That equals a lot of dead little kids. When you leave a three-year-old little girl at home, every three-year-old little girl that you've been down to intubate to put a tube down her mouth so that she can breathe, remind you of your little girl. That holds true for dead or alive. Had a difficult job to do there in Iraq but it was fun. I didn't care about the war that passed us by. I cared about the hearts that I was able to keep beating, the lives we were able to save, and the people we were able to help. I would be in the shower after being in Iraq for several months. It wasn't the first time. I was in the shower and my driver came and beat on the door, said, hey boss, we got to go. I said, okay, why? He said, uh, they're bringing two little girls to us uh, and uh, they've been burned and one of them's in respiratory rest. So I jumped out of the shower, throw on a pair of boots, pants, and a t-shirt, and we would take off. As we were going out the gate, I was trying to get my bulletproof vest over my head. And uh, so I take uh, my seatbelt off and my helmet off. After we got out, my right knee truck would run us off the road. And uh, I would hit the windshield and be thrown in the back. I'd sustain a traumatic brain injury. Mess up my shoulder, my hip, my knee, my ankle. Pretty much if I had